Hi, I'm John Marsden and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. Hi, I'm Simon Murado and today I'm chatting with author and principal, John Marsden. Thanks so much for chatting with us. Pleasure. What were you like as a teenager? It was a really bad time of my life. I had a really miserable few years and I think I was very lost, very confused. Um, I didn't feel safe. That was one of the dominant feelings I have looking back. And I was trying to somehow negotiate my way through a world that I found very confusing and quite unfathomable. And that led me further and further down a kind of pretty depressing path into a quite a uh, alienated and unhappy place. Did that have to do with going to military school? Was that a part of it, that type of education? Or was it more kind of your just teenage experiences? Uh, no, I think there are lots of teenagers who get through their teenage years gracefully and cheerfully and without any significant problems. And that's often overlooked. But uh, I don't think there's anything to do with that uh, time of life uniquely. It was more about the context in which I found myself and the school was certainly part of that. And it was uh, very authoritarian, very strict, very regimented, very um, obsessed with unimportant details like whether you had a button done up or whether your tie was done up properly. And that seemed to matter more than anything, which didn't suit my style, I have to say. <laughs> was it hard for, for someone with, say, creative aspirations in a military school setting? Is that, is that something that maybe is not nurtured as much or that you felt? Yeah, the idea of creativity wasn't really recognised. We were expected to turn up on time, behave well and get the, uh, the marks to pass the exams. So there were a few people who played musical instruments and I wasn't one of them. Uh, but outside that, there was an art room, which uh, was often abused, <laughs> uh, vandalised even, but um, which I think says something about the respect for art in the school. But all in all, it was not seen as a creative um, hub of activity. What were then the subjects that you were able to kind of find solace in? Were there any, any classes that you could go? Just well, English, I know, yeah. Just that English. Was, that was it, yep. And yep. what were the ones then you just, you could not abide by? Well, science, I came last every term for three years. And um, except one term when I came second last and my parents got quite excited. They said, <laughs> oh, you know, you're, you're going well now. That is improvement. You, yeah, yeah, that's right. There's, you're, build, you're building up momentum. But the next term I'd slipped back to last place, so their hopes were dashed. <laughs> sure. Well, some people may not know that you have founded your own school, Candlebar School. Are these some of the things that you wanted to challenge about the structures of education? Is, is, is yeah, that what you, totally. th what you think you were responding to? Uh, at 15 or 16, I was already thinking, this is wrong. These guys don't understand how a school should operate. And I was completely baffled as to why they could possibly think that the way they were running a school was the best way to do it, because it was so obviously effective in all kinds of vital areas. So I would sit in class thinking, if I ran the school, this is what I'd be doing. And uh, I finally got the opportunity many years later. Yeah, few students actually get to execute that, that feeling <laughs> of, here's how I would do it. Mm. Well, uh, going back a little bit, I understand that you studied law at the University of Sydney. Was that your plan, to become a lawyer? It was just seemed like a nice thing to do and a kind of uh, high status profession and something that involved a lot of reading and talking, which I enjoyed. So I didn't really understand much about it, but it seemed like if I wasn't going to do something associated with science or maths, then there weren't many choices left, and that seemed to be the most respectable or desirable of the choices remaining. Okay. How did you come to the decision that it wasn't for you, that maybe it teaching was a, or writing was, was a better Just track? one of those moments where, like an epiphany, where I was sitting in the cafeteria at the law school, and it was about six o'clock at night, and the final year students were coming down the stairs for their evening classes and there was an army of them. They just poured into this cafeteria, all in their pinstripe suits. And I sat there thinking, I cannot join this army. I'd already been in one army for long enough and um, I thought, I can't, but I can't do this. This is just wrong for me. You're obviously a very accomplished author. Was it difficult to, to conceive of a world where that could be your sole career because you, you went into teaching? Or did you want to do both things? Do, you, you know, do your passions lie in both? No, I didn't discover teaching until I was about 28. And from the first day of the university course that I did, I thought, this is great. This is like, wow, I can't believe that we're allowed to do such interesting things because it was a very subversive course. They taught us to go out and subvert the schools of New South Wales and to change the system, which I loved. <laughs> but um, being an author, that was just a daydream. It was like daydreaming that I'd be captain of the Australian cricket team. 
just one of those little ways you occupy yourself when you're sitting on a train and bored. But I never seriously expected it would happen. It was just a nice little fluffy picture that I could dream up to pass the time away. Well, from going to school and then becoming a teacher and now founding your own school, do you find that the issues concerning young people have changed all that much? I think they are. The concerns are still the same. I think this is a really good generation of teenagers, much more enlightened than we were and much more compassionate and much more aware of global issues and, and wanting to do stuff about them. There's a real idealism about today's teenagers, which I admire greatly. There's still a percentage of them who find great difficulty in navigating adolescence, but then there's a percentage of 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds and 60-year-olds who find difficulties navigating that stage of their lives. So I think this demonisation of teenagers is completely unwarranted and doesn't do them any favours, that's for sure. Are these the kind of issues that interested you and inspired you to write so often and so well about teenagers? Yeah, I think so. I think I was so uh, it was such an intense time of my life, my teenage years, and in writing about teenage experiences, I think I was trying to find my way to some sort of understanding of what it was really like for me. But at the same time, there was a little bit of missionary zeal about wanting to give teenagers a sense of uh, the potential of life and um, how you can manage when things go badly. What were your coping mechanisms? How did you pull through? How did you get to the other side of it? Because sometimes when you're a teenager, it's so hard to, to mm. see the light at the end of the tunnel. I read, I read compulsively and uh, obsessively. I read up to three books a day some days and it was like I was living in a fantasy world a lot of the time and I don't think that was terribly healthy but if I hadn't done that I don't think I would have survived so that was my lifeline. I think it would have been much better if I'd had um, a strong group of supportive friends and a different sort of family uh, network but I didn't have those things so books were my salvation. When I got older, uh, I was about 19 when I ended up in a psychiatric ward and I was there for some time and that became my salvation. So I know some people have negative experiences with psychiatry but that wasn't my situation. I would say that uh, though that time in the hospital and the years that followed where I saw a psychotherapist every day for many years saved my life and uh, gave me a different understanding and a different perspective and an ability to cope much more successfully with adversity. I guess it's, it's hard when you kind of look back and, and you think about how hard those times may have been and to go, well, do I have regrets from that period or did it work out? I, I definitely have regrets. I feel I treated some people badly myself and I was treated badly, but I felt like a cork in the ocean just being washed along and having no control over anything. And that's not a healthy position to be in, but that's what it felt like. I think one of the little mantras that made a difference to me with realising eventually that moods do change and no matter how depressed or angry or frustrated or alienated I might be, that that wouldn't last forever, that maybe in five minutes time or an hour's time or a day's time or a week's time I would have different feelings and I kind of clung to that for some years as a way of getting through those dark periods. Is that the advice you give to your students, you know, when they come to you perhaps with similar issues or just similar difficulties? How, what do you say to them to kind of to help them get through? I don't give advice, I just listen and uh, respond to what they say. But I think one of the things that many teenagers need to know perhaps is that they may find themselves eventually in a kind of confrontation, usually with a father, and that can be quite a critical moment in their lives. And for boys and sometimes girls, that's almost a universal experience, I think. And when that moment comes, you have to win that battle or else you'll live in your father's shadow for the rest of your life. So whether it's over a game of chess or in a game of tennis or whether it's racing along the beach, I do think that uh, pretty much all young men and many young women have these pivotal moments where they are poised to defeat their father for the first time in any significant way. And some people crumple at that moment and can't carry through and other people find the strength to go ahead and uh, win that battle and that can be a life-changing experience. Did you have that them. moment? Yeah I did and I think if you fail at that moment then you do risk not becoming the, the complete adult that we all should aspire to be but if you find the strength to defeat your father at that moment then you are more likely to go on and have a successful adult life. Excellent. I've got to find my dad and get the chessboard out of there. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> yep. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. Hey, 
guys, do you enjoy that video? Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find more of our stuff at dnage.com.au.